Hi there, today we're going to cover all things Island Sanctuary, which is coming in patch 6.2. This is coming out August 23rd, 2022. To say that I'm excited is an understatement, as with the addition of this in Final Fantasy XIV, it really covers all aspects of gaming that can entice almost any gamer to dive into the world of Eorzea. If something stands out to you about Island Sanctuary during this video, let me know down below in the comments as I'm really interested to see what players think about it. First, let's cover the kind of dreaded requirements which is said by Yoshi P during the live letter that you'll need to complete 6.0 in order to get access to the island sanctuary. This will create some tension for the player base who have yet to complete MSQ, but I do see the reasoning as this might be associated lore rise with the main story instead of a standalone piece of content. Make sure to limit break through that like button though if you're looking forward to island sanctuary. Now, as you can see, this island is gigantic and we'll need to be doing quite a bit of exploring and content in order to unlock all these areas. With this said, we will have reduced sprint speed as well as increased run and mount speed in order to make traversing this island way easier. Thankfully, they did this as I think it's going to add more to the player base interest because as a veteran, we know how frustrating it can be to walk very slowly everywhere and kind of make you uninterested in content. They also have included no battles on this island, which combined with faster mount speed is supposed to promote a zero stress fee environment when working on this piece of content. Your mentor and NPC is going to be Neko Mimi, which I'm excited to figure out how they play a part in this island, and it said the tutorial alone will take around 2 to 2.5 hours to complete. This is not meant to be rushed through, but enjoyed. I'm assuming this is supposed to be continuous content every time you log in, and not a one-off complete it and never visit again which is the opposite side of the spectrum for a lot of Final Fantasy content in game where you only have to do it once and then you never have to touch it again. I can't help but feel a little bit of an Animal Crossing style vibe here. We have a separate inventory as well as a completely new UI for when we're on this island. It looks like we'll have different modes to access. When we're out traversing the island, you can switch to gathering mode in order to see the gathering nodes. You'll have limited items you can gather without tools. Once gathered though, you'll be able to come back to your island base and craft tools or other items to which you collected. It is important to note here that gathering and crafting will be completely different and not like the main style of gathering and crafting that we're accustomed to. It is far simplified to which I will think gather many different players who may really dislike crafting and gathering in the normal sense. On our island base, we'll be able to expand and make facilities as well. As such, in the tutorial, will be an island hall. Some of these will instantly complete while others will take real life earth hours to complete, example 12 hours, 24 hours, and so on. Another assumption is that this is pretty similar to about mobile games and Animal Crossing games in order to extend content life. We'll be able to eventually customize the look of these buildings or keep what we have started with. I'm very enticed to see what kind of themes that we're going to be given access to for this. One of the biggest qualities of life they'll be adding is that you can queue for duty finder as you are on your island, which can create a lot of promise for island sanctuary, especially for when you're leveling DPS jobs and waiting in those super long queue times. I think this is a big win for island sanctuary as it gives us something to do if you're not into crafting or gathering and you already have other things unlocked. If they would have kept it contained, I think this content would be an afterthought since you can't really multitask, which is really much the mood in Final Fantasy XIV at the moment. We will have special island currency that we'll be able to change in for glamours and mounts, and the glamours alone seem worth it for some effort in here. For the different actions, we're going to have gathering, crafting, and it seems something akin to cultivating, which will be allowed to plant seeds, swap to another mode, and water the seeds. It was said during the live letter that eventually when you get far enough in the island, you'll be able to have the NPCs do these tasks, which is another quality of life that they thought for for the longevity of the content. Another later ability will be capturing mobs, to which we will be given our first net, but after that we will have to craft our own. Now when they said net, I instantly thought of the first time in Animal Crossing, so if that is what this content is like, I am completely excited for it. The net capture will be 100% success rate, which as an MMO junkie is awesome to hear to get rid of the horrible RNGesus that tends to ruin some of these less impactful tasks. 
Once you capture these mobs, they'll be able to gather items for you and you can even give them nicknames. I feel like they're really covering all the bases here with the initial release of Island Sanctuary and can't even imagine where it's going to go to. One of the other things that I'm really hoping that they have is that you can have a retainer bell on the island. They didn't mention any of it, but they did say they had a lot more content that they just couldn't cover because of time management. If they were able to add the retainer bell, then I really think this has all the bells and whistles that a lot of us are looking forward to. As if you're spending many hours on your island, you want to be able to reset your retainers to keep multiple things going at once. Now, if they don't have a retainer bell on the island, then I'm really hoping they make it getting in and out of the island really, really quick. A final recap, as they show in the recent live letter, is that we're going to be able to gather materials, plant crops, care for animals, landscape terrain, build facilities, sell handicrafts, release up to 40 minions on the island, earn rewards, and explore the wilds. Ultimately, this seems like the perfect piece of end game content for a lot of those who do not prefer to do savage content, battle content, crafting your gathering content. And I think it's going to expand and create another type of community all its own in Final Fantasy XIV. It was said that we can look forward to new features being released every two major patches. Now I'm hoping with this piece of information, we can safely assume that there's going to be a ton of content for us to do in between these patches. Another question that I have that I didn't see in the live letter is if we're going to have daily quests or other NPCs that are going to be able to join us on our island and create daily content or weekly content for us to do. Now, with all of these features being explained in release, the one thing that I am still wondering is kind of the overall vision of the island. Is this only going to be a place where we can hang out and create our own type of Final Fantasy XIV universe, or is there going to be more to it? I'd be really interested to see if we can add certain NPCs that we come across in our journey in Eorzea, as I really feel like it can lend to the experience of Island Sanctuary. From what was released, I really feel like the sky's the limit, and I'm really looking forward to this piece of content. Let me know down below what your favorite part about Island Sanctuary is, or if you even like the idea of Island Sanctuary in Final Fantasy XIV. It looks completely optional, so a lot of us who may not like it really won't have to worry about doing it for any reason. Now, I hope this wrapped up and answered a lot of your questions about Island Sanctuary. I want to give a huge shout out and credit to the Final Fantasy XIV Discord, to which Mayuna and Aluna, hopefully pronounced correctly, give live translations for us English-speaking players. Make sure to join that Discord and give them some love, as well you can find my Discord linked down below as well. If you want to watch the full review on the live letter, you can find that video down in the description box. It will be posted shortly after this video. If you want to watch more Final Fantasy guides and tutorials, then you can click here.